God showed him the cloud to let his people know where he is in the room. In other words, God manifested his presence to tell them where he is, to tell them how near he is. Sometimes we are walking with God, we're praying to God, we are living for God. We may not even know God, but we pray a prayer to say, God, if you're out there. And sometimes we have this view that God is way out there, right? We have this view that God is way out there, far from us. Some people think he's so far that they can get away with a little sin. Hello, sir. Some people think that God is not in the room where they're sinning. But some people think God is so busy for my time and my need. But I want us to understand here, God wants to let us know that he is near. As amazing as God is, he is near you. He is near me. He is here. Remember the song? Hallelujah. He is here. Amen. He is here. Holy, holy. Let us praise his name again. He is here. Hallelujah. And God wanted to tell his people that he is not far in your struggle, in your, he has not forgotten you. He has not given up on you. You feel like you're by yourself and nobody calls you. Nobody cares for you. Nobody's there for you. I wanted to let you know that God hears your cry. Matter of fact, God cares about you so much. He, he uses your tears as prayers. And he bottles them up in his jar. That's how much God is near to you. God, manif God manifests himself, manifests his presence to us to tell us how near he is. A lot of times we think that God is far because we don't see him with our eyes. We don't feel him. But God sometimes manifests his presence in your life to let you know he's near you. And I don't know if you haven't experienced him yet, if you haven't experienced him yet, my prayer is that you will experience him yet because he wants to show himself to you. Jesus spoke this in John 14, verse 22. When he was talking to the disciples, he said that God will show himself to those God that loves him. God will manifest himself. And so what we're learning here in this text is God wants us to know when his presence is in the room. Hello, somebody. God wants us to know when his presence is in the room. We know he's everywhere, but how do we know he's right here? You know, you, know, you, you ever know when you're, you ever know when you're by yourself? There's, there's a way in which you kind of relax you kind of be yourself. You kind of act a bit more relaxed, right? You, you don't have the makeup on. You don't have the, the beard shaved. You don't have the nice clothes on. So you just, you just walk up in the house all, of you, all you want. You got, your, you got your PJs on, you know? And then someone knocks on the door, and then you run to your room and try to freshen up and do all the things. You, and then you open the door and say, hello, how you doing? You know? There's a way in which we can be by ourselves and we act like nobody's around. But God wants us to know he is right here. That, that he doesn't want us to act like he's not in the room. Hello, somebody. You hear me? But he wants us to act like he's in the room. You know? Now, I just want you to imagine something here. Think of the week you're going to have. And you now, when this week you're going to have, God is going to be with you everywhere. He's going to be with you on the job. He's going to be with you at school. He's going to be with you when you're sleeping. He's going to be with you when you're walking. Think about, like literally, I'm not talking, just imagine. I want you to see God literally being your personal 
buddy, friend that goes with you everywhere. How does that change your behavior? You're going to be cognizant that he's there. You're going to think twice before you say things. And, you know, all these things are going to be filtered through before you do. But sometimes when we think God is not near and we're by ourselves, it causes us to act in ways that is not what God wants. And so God is trying to tell us that God is near. But not only do we need to know that God is near, we need to experience it. And God is going to manifest his presence so that you know he's near. You know, when the cloud covered the tabernacle, not only did, was the cloud important, that they saw the cloud, but there was something with the cloud. There was something with the cloud. And that something that was with the cloud was called the glory of God. The cloud is not the glory, and the glory is not the cloud. The cloud was the physical deployment to let people know that God is in this vicinity. But the glory is not the cloud. Hello, somebody. Or we, or we would be worshiping the cloud. Hello, somebody. But what is in the cloud is the glory of God. Hallelujah. The glory is, the is connected to the person, the being of God. Hallelujah. So while you see the manifestation, don't worship the manifestation. Hallelujah. While you may see me preaching and the power of God comes on me, you don't worship me. Hello, somebody. That's what happened uh, um, with John when he was in the book of Revelations and he was caught up to see God and see his angels and all that kind of stuff. And he was so amazed by it that he bowed down and started to worship. He says, no, get up. Don't worship. Don't worship me. Worship. That's the glory of God on me. Don't confuse. Don't confuse the cloud with the glory. Give the glory to God. Hello, somebody. Give the glory. Give the praise to God. That's not, that's not, the glory is not me. The glory is God's. Hello, somebody. Hallelujah. So as the cloud covered the tabernacle, the glory of God filled the tabernacle. The cloud was on top. The glory was inside. The cloud, the cloud points to the location where God is, his nearness. But the glory of God points to the majesty, to the holiness, to the beauty of God. Beauty of God. The heaven declares the beauty of God. Hallelujah. The glory of God is also the weight of his invisible, invincible presence. Invisible presence, sorry. The glory of God is also the weight of his, of his invisible presence. To better understand this glory, you know, we have to consider the sun outside that's lighting our day. This is of a lesser glory than God. But we know that we can be impacted by the sun in ways beyond our sight of the sun. That we don't need to know or see the day for us to know that we can be impacted by the sun. Because there is an invisible glory of the sun that affects us. Hello, somebody. There's an invisible glory that if the sun's light was to go out, we would still know that the sun is still in our vicinity. And that invisible glory is called gravity. That because of the sun's mass, it has the power to pull earth in orbit around it. So even though we cannot see the sun, if that was, you know, say the nighttime, we cannot see the sun, we know the sun is still in our vicinity because it has gravity. The mass that of the sun pulls the earth around it in orbit. In other words, the earth worships the sun. The, sun, the earth revolves its life around the sun. Hello, somebody. Do you hear me, church? Just because you can't see God in your life doesn't mean that God's glory is not pulling you in orbit around him. Hello, somebody. That God can still cause you to worship him even when you can't see him. Hello, somebody. Even when you can't feel him, even when you can't hear him, you can still be moved by him. Hello, somebody. 
As Paul said, something is, is happening to me. Something compels me to preach this gospel. Something got a hold of me, right, Brother Harry? That song, something got a hold of me. You know? That the glory of God goes beyond our senses and taps into our spirit because spirit speaks to spirit. As God is a spirit, we can be moved by his spirit and we can't understand the spirit just like we can't tell where the wind comes from, where the wind goes. So stop trying to understand what the mind cannot grapple. Hello, somebody. Sometimes our understanding causes us to be blind to the move of God in your life. But the good news is even when you don't understand, God is still in your life. God is still a mighty presence in your life. Just as the sun inspires the earth to worship, God can still inspire us to worship him. But there are places in our life, there are places in this world where there is a greater weight of God's glory than in other places. There's a greater weight. There's a greater mass, just like the sun has a great mass that pulls the earth around its orbit. There are seasons in your life, there are areas in your life where God will show up. And it won't be like business as usual. It will interrupt you. It will cause you to change trajectory. Right? And this is what happened when God's glory filled the, the tabernacle. God filled the tabernacle with his glory to get people ready. Tell your neighbor to move. Tell your neighbor we're getting ready to move. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No longer was the cloud on that stationary mountain that could not move anywhere. But now the glory is now being moved to a portable tabernacle. That tabernacle they built was not permanent location. It was a tabernacle that they could pack up and walk with. And when God says camp here, they unpack and set up the tabernacle. The tabernacle was a mobile church. And they can go anywhere with that tabernacle, anywhere where God calls them to go. And God was setting them up. Why the glory moved onto the tabernacle was because God was setting them up on a mission. Hello, somebody. Not to sit down on that mountain anymore. You had some time to rest from your, you know, Egyptian experience, but now I'm getting ready to put you on a mission for someone else. God was getting ready to fill his glory into his people so that he can use them to spread the glory throughout the world. 